Oh boy, oh boy, we're back. And what a start to the year. The breakdown starts now. Oh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. This is the Rick Wilson, and it's a new year. We're back, and things are off to a hell of a freaking start. Rick, oh, my God. First of all, I missed you. I'm glad to I see your face. I miss you, too. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How all that business. I yes. saw you briefly at our meeting in Nashville. Yes, uh, yes. That was a brief, a, a brief whirlwind uh day or two there and brief uh, but productive and brief but productive uh, all good yes Moving i spent I into spent, the future all that yes. stuff and i spent the new year in your home state of florida again my husband and i did the space coast thing and we got to do something really freaking cool which was watch a spacex launch from a boat in cape canaveral on tuesday it was awesome I kind of love that. <laughs> it's on my Instagram if people want to see it. It was so freaking cool. I've been to shuttle launches. I've mentioned that before. And since they don't exist anymore, the next best thing are rocket launches, even though it's stupid SpaceX. But they're doing great stuff. Yes, and um, that was really neat. So uh, we're all well rested. I got a little tan. You look well rested, Rick. Let's get into it because we have a, a packed show tonight because there's just so much going on. I don't even know where to start. But you know what? I think we should start before we get into the chaos right now. I think they're on the 11th now failed vote for McCarthy. 417th. Right. I don't know. I, Somewhere I don't know. There. Um, there's a whole lot of losing going on with McCarthy. Um, but before we get into all that and tomorrow, you know, we're, we've got the anniversary of, of January 6th, which just it's hard to believe it's been two years. We have a recap. Those of you who are loyal breakdown watchers oh, yes. know that every Tuesday, we usually do a last week in the Republican Party, which is a compilation of all the batshit crazy stuff that Republicans have done just in one week. Well, God bless our editors, particularly Jeff, who has taken the time him. to do a last year in the Republican Party. And woof, it's a doozy. And the joy. Happy. First, we're not a cult. There is a demonic portal, a satanic portal above the White House. There is ketchup dripping down the wall. And all of a sudden, I feel a shot on my back, like somebody shot me. I'm not going to cower. I'm not going to run from you. Hey, we're going to have kind of a, a, a sexual get-together at one of our homes. You should come. Oh, my God. I was on crack. Right, right. <laughs> By the way, you can pick up a butt plug or a dildo at Target. Celebrate Father's Day with the best meat America has to offer. I have never been an escort. For Senator Ted Cruz. My pronoun is kiss my ass. My pronouns are Trump one. My pronouns are Reagan and Trump. My pronouns are let's go Brandon. <laughs> Two words for you. Joe Biden is a freaking idiot. Biden, where's your build back better, motherfucker? Are you ready to be called a racist? White supremacy, which, you know, I condone. I mean, I, I condemn. <laughs> Actually, I'm not bad at black people. I don't care if Herschel Walker paid to abort endangered baby eagles. Stand by Herschel tonight. I am what with many police officers. Never. I have trained with FBI. That's $20 for crudite, and this doesn't include the tequila. I'm going to win the election, and I will accept that result. If they win, I should get all the credit, and if they lose, I should not be blamed at all. See that Democrat go ding? So many people voted on issues that weren't the issues we thought they were voting on. You think Princess Diana is still alive? Absolutely. There's not a lot of job market for queer pet literature. How did you know? that she'd know that President Trump... Well, there might be somebody else I'd prefer more. The orange m and does appear very anxious. You can declassify just by saying um, it's declassified even by thinking about it. Donald's the only boy that can straighten it out, I'll tell you that. I actually saw people trying to leave um, and, and people leaving early even before he was done. He's still speaking now. Uh, and, and then they... I think perhaps a little concerned that the hall, would, the hall would empty out too much. They actually started preventing people from leaving. So now they're no longer allowing people to leave. <laughs> it has been quite the year. But you know what? Most importantly, uh, democracy is still alive. 
Um, it, we, we were worried about how it could have gone. And but we did predictably say that if Republicans took the House back, that it would be chaos. Well, there's chaos. Rick. Welcome to the welcome to the party, pal. You know, Terry, you were one of the first people who predicted that Kevin would never be speaker. And and a, even if he was speaker, that he would be, you know, basically castrated, hobbled, whatever, mm -hmm. and that, that the, the lunatics would be in charge of the asylum. If folks haven't figured it out after three days of this complete train wreck, and, and by the way, and counting, let me say that, let me going. rephrase that. It's not a train wreck. It's a train wreck in the nuclear waste dump near the burning dumpster fires on the top of Rabid Clown Mountain. This thing is completely out of hand at every level. Kevin does not have control of this process. And even if you think he's going to win, and look, he might have enough of his soul and, and power left to scrap to, to pull it off. But even if you think that's the case, Kevin McCarthy is giving Matt Gates and Andy Biggs and Paul Gosar and Lauren Boebert and the rest of, the, of this terrorist clown caucus the power to blow up every legislative thing in the House. So yep. the best scenario for Kevin McCarthy, the best scenario right now, he gets the speakership. He's the weakest speaker in history. They spend the first half of this year doing their stupid Hunter Biden laptop you know, investigations and investigating Anthony Fauci. Right. And then in September, when the hard target of the debt ceiling must be passed, they really need to act before, but they can, they right. can, they could stretch it out, but that's it like making, that'll make that the part. markets nervous. When he does that and tries to do a budget with the Senate, that is when they've now given the crazies the power to have one person stand up and say, I have a call for a vote of no confidence on Kevin McCarthy. And they're going to do that. And they're going to blow Kevin up and they're going to remove him. And right. then it'll be Elise or it'll be Steve Scalise or it'll be some other rando, Kevin or Patrick McHenry. And that person will say, oh, I can't let the full faith and credit of the U.S. government be exploded. We have to do a debt ceiling. We have to do a budget. And then they'll do it again. Right. They'll and throw again, them out. Too. And again. And this is what's important about this, Rick. And I'm glad you went through that because it's really a good summation of what's to come. No matter what happens by the what, when this this charade finally ends, this political kabuki theater that we're watching unfold, this has to come to an end at some point. We're not right. going to go back to 1856 when they it took 135 rounds and several months to finally get a speaker. We're not doing that. We're all, we're past what happened in 1923, 100 years ago. That was only nine rounds. Um, we're up to 10 or 11 now. I think it's 11 now. As um, we're doing this, I think we're in round 11. 11, yeah. Um, but what Kevin McCarthy has given away, the concessions that he has made so far, really do change the complexion and the operations of the House and of the speakership itself. He is signing his political death warrant. Oh, uh, I mean, this uh, idea, 100%. yes, this idea, why we've been, you probably, a lot of people are probably hearing terms that they've never heard before unless they're total nerds, live in Washington or worked on the Hill, which stuff like, Motion to vacate, uh, rules committee, germane. Um, <laughs> what, what's another one? Oh, uh, discharge petitions. Right. These are all parliamentary maneuvers and, and inner workings of the House. But the stuff matters. This is how the sausage is made. And Kevin McCarthy conceding the one person is all that's needed to call a motion to vacate, which is basically a no confidence vote in the House, is insane. Before, just a little background on this. And Rick, you will remember this. When John Boehner was Speaker of the House, yep. I was up on the Hill then. And that's when the Tea Party came in. And they had, you know, they were similar to these people now, not quite as brazen and obnoxious because they didn't have the same social media ecosystem that, that, that drives these trolls now. But this was the, how it all kind of really started to percolate up. Yep. And they gave him a hard time. And John Boehner lost like 24 of them, but they had a larger margin in Congress at the time. So Republicans could afford to lose the crazies. He's like, yeah, okay, whatever. He's the one who actually called them the chaos, chaos caucus first, by the right. way. Right. But then by the second time around, when in 2015, when they finally drove him out, he was like, okay, it was because of this. They were, it was Mark Meadows who led the freedom caucus to yep. out Boehner because he wasn't doing what they wanted. And they thought he was a squish. 
And when Paul Ryan came in reluctantly and said, fine, I'll do it, but we're changing that freaking rule, okay? We're not doing this. We Only one of you can kick me out. And then when Pelosi came in, she had a little trouble with hers, with her, with her, the rebels in her caucus. They changed it to 50 people. He needed right. to- so now Kevin McCarthy is going back and giving the, these, these, the kook caucus here what they want with one person. This is insane. They will never get anything done because they don't want to. They are- and you know, Tara, there are a lot of other rule changes they're insisting on. Yes, there that are. That are arcane for most people. Right. But they're, but giving, they're giving individual members the power to amend bills on the floor randomly with no further committee oversight of them. Which normally, folks, bills are amended well before right. they reach In the floor. They go through committees. Right. People amend them. They change them. They modify and improve them. Well, now what they're saying is that Andy Biggs can say to every single bill, uh, I want to um, restore all the Confederate statues in America. That's my <laughs> amendment to the transportation bill. Right. And I want to declare November to be National Pecan Pie Month. Right. And that's, that's my addition to the energy bill. Uh, and, they'll, and they have they to vote on it, which is a waste be, of time. And and you know that they, they will use all the procedural hoo-ha. It won't just be a voice vote. They'll call for the roll. Yep. They'll go over and over again. And they'll do this in a way that is, that to use another legislative term, that is dilatory. Yes. That delays everything. That slows down the process of everything. That gets into this craziness. Now, the other part of the giveaway that Kevin is apparently offering, according to news reports tonight is he's offering these committee chairmanships and committee positions to insane people. So do you really want to put Matt Gates on as the chair, chair of the Armed Services Committee? I don't Which is think what so. he wants. He wants a, a subcommittee right. of armed services, I think. Um, and what's important to understand about that, okay, when uh, as the Hill, resident Hill staffer here, there right. are other committees that make these determinations. You have the steering committee, which is what's set up to help with these committee assignments. And right. usually people who have expertise in certain areas or what they ran on in their, you know, in their districts, um, they get assigned to the committees of interest there because yep. you want people with expertise and interest in that, in those, in those, on those issue areas, working on them. You don't want someone who has, you know, no experience whatsoever with taxes or, you know, with, with budget stuff on those committees. And that's what they're trying to do. The speaker hasn't traditionally just appointed people. That's why they have the steering committee so that right. it isn't just a corrupt way where you do this for me, I do this for you. I mean, is there some of that? Yes, of course. But the committee process is supposed to avoid that. So that's the, what they're trying to blow up. They're trying to circumvent the steering committee process with the committee assignments. That's and right. then they're also trying to circumvent the rules committee, which is actually the quietest second most powerful next to ways and means um, committee in the house because the rules committee determines what's quote germane so that some rando can't introduce a, an amendment that has nothing to do with anything into a bill and then back up the whole process just to be, you know, um, just to delay. So they're trying to do all this stuff, which is how is this in the interest of the American people? It's not, it's in the interest of owning the land and just burning it down. Right. And again, what should, what, what should people take away from this? I think there are three really important lessons. Number one, the people that in Washington, the conventional wisdom crowd, uh, are desperate, 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 desperate to have this one narrative line, Trump's over, it's all in the past. Folks, 200 fucking Republicans who are Kevin McCarthy's core caucus are election deniers. Mm -hmm. They are the product of winning primaries because they got Donald Trump to endorse them. They are all of a piece. There are no remote Republican members that if you put a camera in front of their face right now would say, Joe Biden's the legitimate president. Donald Trump lost fair and square because they know they would get primaried. They know they would get Trump tweeting at them or, t- or truthing, whatever the fuck he does. Whatever now, it is. At them. That is an important lesson here. Kevin McCarthy is Donald Trump's candidate. He's almost certainly going to find a way, as Pyrrhic and flawed and Sisyphean as the entire task has been, <laughs> he's going to find a way to make this happen. He is the Trump candidate with the vast majority, with 90% of Republicans backing McCarthy. They are the Trump party. He is the Trump guy. He went to Mar-a-Lago a couple days after 1-6 to suck Trump's ass. Okay? So that he can this win is this not vote right some now. End of Donald Trump as a power broker. Get the fuck out of here. The second thing I think people really need to pay attention to here is this is only the beginning. Yeah. This is 
maybe it may be perhaps the end of the beginning, but the right. chaos you were about to see from the people that run Congress now, because no matter what McCarthy's door plate sa- says on it, the lunatics run the fucking asylum. Yep. Whatever you think is going to happen, triple it in your mind for craziness. Because it is going to be everything with the Hunter Biden laptop mm-hmm. and Fauci and Antifa the and deep BLM. The state and all of that nonsense. All of this shit. Yes. They're going to go after the FBI. Yes. They're going to go after Big Tech. They're going to do everything they possibly can to have an endless sh- series of show trials, horseshit hearings, madness. You know, It's going to make Benghazi look like the Nuremberg trials in yeah. terms of seriousness. It's this true. thing is going to be absolutely batshit off the rails. And the third, and no and one's in final, control of it, and no, no one's in right. control of it. The third and final thing is, this is all battle space preparation for 2024. Mm-hmm. The 2024 presidential race is on right now. Yeah. I know, I hate it too, folks. Believe me, I took the first real time off that I've taken <laughs> off, not just in the last three or four years, but probably in the last 15. I've got a lot of perspective on some stuff here. And, and one of these things that, that is very clear in my mind is that the 2024 race is playing out right now in front of you in Congress. It's playing out right now in front of you with the maneuvering of the various people that are thinking about running. It's playing out with, with, with the position of the Republican Party as a party that is going to go completely off the rails. They're going to try to turn 2024 into a referendum on Hunter Biden's laptop and all this other bullshit that right now you think doesn't matter, but it is going to become a centerpiece of their messaging for the next two years. That's a hundred percent right. And, uh, and the desperation that we are seeing coming out, coming from McCarthy is just, it's, it's pathetic that he, he, despite all of this, despite knowing where, how this ends up, even for him, if he, if he somehow pulls this out, which I'm still not convinced he will, the absolute humiliation of all of this is still not enough for him to say, you know what? Maybe they're just not that into me. Last night I was on MSNBC and I called him a great politi- hit, by the way. No, thank you. I called McCarthy a politico, a political sadomasochist, because I don't have any other explanation for why he would continue on this path. Because even if he gets it, what does he think he's going to accomplish other than having an asterisk next to his name? Um, that he was speaker for how long? I mean, it's insane to me. And um, of course, there's another thing that he may have as a result of this. I think there's a new um, definition in the dictionary with Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> to do it. Roll yes. the video. Kevin McCarthy got 203 votes from his fellow Republicans, the 218 needed with 434 members of the House voting. It's already all but impossible to see McCarthy getting there on this second ballot. The House Speaker race still up in the air as GOP infighting sinks McCarthy on the first three ballots now. Once again, this is the fourth roll call where Kevin McCarthy will not be elected speaker. We are on the fifth vote for speaker of the House, but the outcome is expected to be the same. California Republican Kevin McCarthy so far is coming up short. McCarthy has now lost six times in a row. Their strategy is just to embarrass Kevin McCarthy to death. Well, they've succeeded. Right next to Politico sadomasochist. There you go. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, D.C. Oh, has a guy. higher population uh, population percentage of dominatrixes than in probably any other place in the country because there's a whole group of particularly Republicans, but not exclusively, who uh, like to have their naughty fannies beaten. Well, if okay. Kevin wanted this much humiliation. <laughs> Literally and figuratively, apparently, Rick Wilson. <laughs> indeed. Oh, my indeed. God. Gross, gross, gross. Um, I don't want that image. I don't want that image. Because, you know, some but, people put that image out with Marjorie Taylor Greene and <laughs> with a leash. You know, <laughs> there, there, was a, there was a photograph tonight of George Santos <laughs> sitting next to Marjorie Taylor Greene. Oh, yeah. LP and tweeted that out. All I could think of was, like, what universe would these people exist in? 
Like even Newt Gingrich would have been like, no, out. Right, right, right. out. Say what you want about Newt. But Say he had what you will, and I will. That. Right, yes. But back then in the 90s, believe me, Newt Gingrich and that leadership team had their shit together, and they never would have put up with that. Dick Army and the, the Hammer, Tom DeLay, and Newt Gingrich would never have put up with these clowns. Never, ever, ever, ever. They would never have gotten away with that. But hey, um, here we are. Oh, just a quick shout out to everybody uh, watching on YouTube right now. Big numbers right now on YouTube and the other platforms. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight, yes. folks. We really, really appreciate it. We know we've been on hiatus for a bit. Um, glad to have you back. And, um, you know, for a special show like this, it's, it's important, we think, to talk about the, 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 both the, the ridiculous and the sublime. Correct. And while the McCarthy thing is ridiculous... Tomorrow is also a pretty important anniversary, isn't it, Tara? Yes, it is. And um, I I just think that as we wrap up the McCarthy conversation, it's really indicative of where we have come. It's a byproduct of what happened post-2020. This is all coming to all coming to a head. And you know, tomorrow being the two-year anniversary of January 6th, it, it's infuriating for me to watch how many of these fuckers who were part of that, part of that insurrection, who fomented it, who financed it, who have glorified it, who've tried to play it down, who have said that the the, the insurrectionists right. are patriots like Marjorie Taylor Greene has, visiting them in prison, calling them political prisoners, that these people are now being elevated like this. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it's really indicative of how far the Republican Party has fallen and why we said it needs to be burned to the ground. And I want to remind people why that- Why do you think they took down the magnetometers? Yes, they took the magnetometers down. They want down, people down, to feel threatened yes, again. Yes, it's, 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 it's all of that intimidation factor from the MAGAs. If anyone doesn't think that MAGA's in charge, they're wrong. Right. And if anybody thinks that MAGA's not going to be in charge, if Kevin McCarthy somehow pulls this out, they're wrong. Because let's not forget, McCarthy was also there and also voted against it. And let's play a video. Yeah. You did this, Kevin McCarthy. You did this. 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 Kevin McCarthy, you did this. That's what history is going to remember Kevin McCarthy for. Yeah. He's going to remember that history, the history books are going to remind us what he, what side he chose to be on. And it was not the side of the true patriots who were the people who were defending the Capitol that day that were saving his ass and the rest of those ungrateful bastards in Congress who still voted against the certifi certification of Biden's election and who still try to deny that it was, uh, that it wasn't Trump supporters. That's the side that Kevin McCarthy chose. And it's, it's, in, it's, it's shameful. And then as we watch yes. these people give their sanctimonious speeches in the House as they're going through this process of, of uh, voting for speaker and nominating these idiots like Byron Donalds, these backbenchers that no one's ever heard of, and, and Kevin Kerr Hearn and all these people, like the Byron Donalds thing is just another, another way for these people to try to whitewash all of the racism and tokenizing of the, uh, the black members of Congress that are Republicans now. They're, they're trying to say that this guy is qualified to be speaker. Give me a break. He's a backbencher from Florida who pals around with Roger Stone and he's an unqualified token trying to say just because, oh, you know, he's he's come up from a, a single parent household and, oh, he knows he he's uh, big in mind and stature. I mean, the racist tropes were insane. I'm trying to make people think that this is a serious choice. It's all to whitewash where the Republican Party is, what they think of minorities and what they think, like, we're all supposed to forget where the party has been and what they've supported for the last few years since Trump. We see it. It, it. Also, it also tells you that, that 
there's a degree of fuckery in this process going on with these people yes. where there is a meaningful possibility that Gates is trying to open the door to Donald Trump being the speaker in some long bomb million to one horse shit. Yeah. Like maybe lightning strikes three times in the same place, blah, it's blah, blah. It's a fundraising blah. tactic. You know this. He said he's going is, to right, do this. Right. But it is primarily, it is primarily, uh, you know, and, there, and you can see how serious they are. They went from Jim Jordan to Byron right. Donalds to Hearn. Right. Right. to, you know, random guy at the Waffle House is going right. to be by the end of this thing <laughs> because they are looking, they don't want anyone focusing too long on any one of the weaknesses of these of these individual candidates. I mean, if you wanted Jim Jordan to be speaker, you know, you're going to need to accept all the things that come with Jim Jordan, sartorially right. and morally. Um, <laughs> as a guy who likes to hear the screams of innocent victims, I mean, oh my. he should probably enjoy actually being in the majority. But, oh, Lord. Um, you know, this is a guy who, who they 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 had him there for a hot second. Then Byron Donalds became the hot flavor for three or four votes. Yeah, and again, said, by the end of said, this, they said Hakeem Jeffries has made history. He's the first black leader. We're going to find our black guy. Where can we find our black token now to put up there? Get the hell out of here! It was infuriating. Let me tell you, if the, if, if, if the Democrats were smart, if the Democrats were smart, they would go to six Republicans, and they actually they would go to ten Republicans and say, the first six of you to cross over and vote for Jeffries are subcommittee chairs, mm -hmm. good ones. Which they could do. Real ones. The next four, thanks, you get a fruit basket and a, ba a set of steak knives. But <laughs> yeah, the, no. idea, the idea that, that McCarthy is compromised so much now may open up that strategy on the side of, of, of Jeffries and the Democratic caucus to go at some of the more establishment types and say, are you really in for this ride? Right. Are you like really in? crazies are you yes. really with the people who think that one six was a great idea <laughs> right and still do because they none of them have backed off that and not only that as the as long as this goes on let's remember people they are not technically sworn in the 118th congress doesn't exist right. because they have to by law I, as i read today the only person first. who's actually a sworn member of congress right now is the delegate from Puerto Rico, which has a four-year congressional term. <laughs> oh my God! So I and don't know. I didn't see. I didn't have an alternative future in my head right. where the Puerto Rican <laughs> delegate becomes the one surviving what? member. I mean, if you pitch that in a story about a, right. a, a nuclear attack, people would go, "No, <laughs> too congressless. Random. Yes, that's what we are. We are congressless. We are congressless. Congressless, and they don't get paid. They're going to start not get paid soon. They can't have intelligence briefings because technically their their security clearances aren't valid. They can't do constituent work. I mean, it is ground to a halt, people. So this is not going to last for too much. I cannot see it going on for too much longer without some type of major um, change in. Uh, attitude here and p potentially McCarthy stepping aside because the last thing I'll say in this before we get to January 6th, our good friend Denver Riggleman made an excellent point today on CNN yes. and Denver knows of what he speaks because he lost to one of these nutsos. He lost to Bob Good, Bob Good in Virginia and he's one of these hardliners and these people and we've seen this right Rick over the last two years these people think that this is some type of fight against good and evil. They have turned this this Christian nationalist um, idea of some type of righteous crusade that they're on. Right. Them unmovable. They're irrational. There is no deal to be made with people like this. And Denver said, listen, I'm seeing the fundraising uh, emails from people like Bob Good. And sure. that's exactly the language they're using. This is a righteous cause. You're not going to change these people's minds. So even if Chip Roy comes up with 10 or 11 people that might like the rules changes. What about the six, seven, or eight of them that are unmovable, that think this is some crusade from God for them? It's Gosar, Biggs, yeah. Good, Gates, Bobert. They're not going to move. Ever. Ever. So I don't know. They have who, no incentive to move. They don't. And I don't know who steps in and finally tells McCarthy, you need to, you need to step aside. I don't know who that's Jeff going Miller, to be. Jeff Miller, his lobbyist friend. Oh, well, perhaps. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But on that note, I want to transition to January 6th. You know, this was a really tough day for us. And I remember when we went live on air yep. and, um, you know, it, it was very emotional and very intense. And tomorrow, Lincoln Project is going to be running a bunch of um, videos and things from that day in commemoration. And so I suggest people check it out tomorrow on the on the social channels. But I want to run this it's something that you guys put together, and it is still one of the most powerful videos that you guys and your team, Rick, have ever put together. And it still gives me 
a visceral emotional reaction when I watch it. And I want everyone to watch Remember. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. The only way we're going to lose this election is if the election is rigged. He knows that's what it takes to raise an army of patriots who love America and will protect her. You won't be safe in Joe Biden's America. I'm a Republican, but I call myself a Trumpican. Our way of life uh, will be preserved and maintained. So help us God. Guns up! This can't be our country. This is not our country. Alleged plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. We are not one another's enemy. This virus is our enemy. No religion, no anything. Hurt the Bible, hurt God. Will you Who shut is up, your man? Person? Biden raped his daughter. We're a Biden raped. Election day in America. It is here. Former Vice President Joe Biden will win. This is an embarrassment to our country. 2020 election was the most secure in U.S. history. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. You all knew it was coming. You could have set your watches to it. A number of House members plan to object. Over the final certification of Joe Biden's victory. The leaders of Congress are misleading people daily in this by not pushing back. President Trump's baseless claims of fraud are fueling his supporters. That's why Republican silence is so deafening right now. Careful, we will not take it anymore. You can feel the, the rage, the madness. Let's have trial by combat. It's the election. We can take that place. We're seeing protesters overcome the police. They were terrorists. An example needs to be made. <laughs> <laughs> They tried to disrupt this country's democracy. Trump and I, we've had a hell of a journey. I hate it being this way. Careful what you wish for. Donald J. Trump ain't going anywhere. We have- it was a very close run thing. We participated in 22 races this year and were successful in 17 of them. It's a pretty good batting average. We're not unhappy with it. We're not unhappy with the outcome and the investment we made in those races and the work we did. But... This is an effort that it's easy to to say, oh, it's January of the off year. We can take it easy. We're just going to lay back and see what happens. You cannot rest in this fight. The other side does not rest. They do not sleep. They do not blink. They do not wait. They will continue to do everything they can to lead this country down a path of authoritarianism and anti-small D democratic politics that if you contemplate the scenes you just saw on January 6th, imagine that every day in your community. That's what they're after. Physical violence and intimidation to break the spirit of Americans, to make them scared, to make them intimidated, to put them in, to make them silent, to put them in a corner where they don't feel like they can participate in the political process. That's why we're here. That's, That's why right. we fight. That's why we do things like this. That's why we do the ads we do. That's why we do the work in the campaigns that we do. That's why our critics on the left can't do what we do. And our critics on the right hate us with the fire of a billion <laughs> suns. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're going to see a lot uh, of, of maneuvering in the next few months on the part of Republicans who want to be president. But there's one thing they all share. They're all fully bought in to the ideology of Trumpism. There are no good guys right now in the Republican nope. primary. Nope. There are a- options Not to have a chance. that might be a little smoother than Trump, that might be a little slicker than Trump, that might be a little less overtly rude and offensive than mm. Trump. But they have all bought into this ideology. They have all bought into turning up the Republican base in the way they need to do it to make those people turn out. And what makes those people turn out? January 6th. That's right. Threats of violence. That's right. Threats of intimidation. Barely concealed racial animus. Mm-hmm. They are going to do what they did in 2020 and in 2016 and the people right now who believe in it just like in 2015 and 16 oh yeah trump's done it's over he's fucked up it's not gonna happen folks i heard that (laughs) from people around jeb bush and marco rubio and ted cruz and chris christie and scott walker and Christy and, and and Carly Fiorina and every other Republican who thought they were going to be the golden child, and then Trump came and ate their liver. This is a threat that continues from him and his movement, um, and that's why we're here. 
that's why we do what we do. That's why we keep up this fight. And, and again, critics on the left, some of them don't like us. Critics on the right, all of them don't like us. We're <laughs> going to stay in this fight because we're effective at it. We're good at it. And we believe it's important. And the, and the energy and the focus and the support of the people like you folks watching the show tonight is enormously important to us. Yes. And it's enormously important that you join us to take action. Uh, you can join the union, which is our volunteer action hub. You can support us at lincolnproject.us slash donate. You can sign up for our social media platforms on Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, God knows where else, probably guys with stone tablets running through the street <laughs> with LP carved on them. Um, but your, your engagement and involvement in politics, unfortunately in America, it's no longer optional. That's correct. Because if you are asleep at the switch, what you just saw will be Is successful the next time. And yeah. that's what's so important about this. And before we wrap that's up right. the show, there's everyone knows that law enforcement is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm married to one. I grew up with one. And this is something that's very important to me. And what happened to those officers that day is something that will forever be seared in my mind and will motivate me to continue this fight for pro-democracy on top of everything else. Because I think that those guys need to be honored for their sacrifices and what they did to help literally fight for democracy. And don't let any of these Republicans ever say that they are that they back the blue ever again. Check out this ever. video. Republicans like to say they back the blue, that only they stand with law enforcement the cops' lives matter. But since January 6th, the cops who defended Congress from Donald Trump's mob have learned the ugly truth, that they're still being attacked at the Capitol, insulted, belittled, ignored, even investigated. This time, by the very House GOP members they risked their lives to protect. These Republicans stood behind the brave men and women of the Capitol Police and D.C. Metro, but won't stand up for them today. They are the cowards of Congress, the anti-cop caucus. They are the Republican Party. That's who these people are. And you know what? I'm grateful to, for the fact that we have a president in Joe Biden who honors these folks and who would never, ever take for granted what they've done. Tomorrow, President Biden is going to be honoring them with the President's Citizens Medal, which is one of the highest honors in the land. He's giving, he's awarding it to 12 people, officers and elected officials who did not succumb to that bullshit. And I just want to read off the names. Jocelyn Benson, Secretary of State of Michigan, Rusty Bowers, the Arizona House Speaker, Harry Dunn, my good friend, Capitol Police Officer, Caroline Edwards, she was the first law enforcement injured that day, Michael Fanone, we know him, MPD officer oh, yeah. who was, who was uh, they were on to kill him with his own gun, uh, Ruby Freeman and her mother, remember her? Ruby, I mean, Ruby Freeman and her daughter, they were the election workers who were right. intimidated in Georgia. Uh, uh, Officer Gunnell, who was another one of the police op Capitol police officers who lost his career as a result of his injuries that day. He also testified in front of Congress. Eugene Goodman, the officer who saves lives. That's the officer that redirected the crowd that was only yards yep. away from the vice president of the United States and from Mitt Romney. They would have killed him that day, one of them, if that crowd had gotten through. And thank God for the, for the astute quickness and bravery of Eugene Goodman. Uh, Daniel Hodges, who was another one of the officers, he was the one that was crushed. When you saw that screaming video of him, that was Daniel Hodges. Shea Moss, she was the daughter of Ruby Freeman. Al Schmidt, who just, by the way, in a unity government move in Pennsylvania, is now the Secretary of State of Pennsylvania, I believe. He was one of the yep. uh, Republican civil servants there in Philadelphia that beat back some of the um, election fraud nonsense there. And Brian Sicknick, rest in peace, he lost his life. Uh, as a result of his injuries on January 6th. Those people will be honored tomorrow. It's the right thing for President Biden to do. And let's not forget how many Republicans voted against giving those officers and others 
the Congressional That's Medal right. of Freedom when that opportunity presented itself. So shame right. on them. But here we respect the blue. We love them. We thank them for their service and all of those brave people for doing the right thing and saving our democracy then. And we thank all of you for supporting us and sticking with us as we continue this fight for democracy. We're happy to be back. Rick, good to see you. Um, you are about to go do Al Jazeera. I'm about yep. to go do MSNBC. We'll because catch you folks work, again soon. The work never <laughs> the work never stops, but we'll see you guys on Tuesday and um, never forget. Thank you guys.